Taking the time to enjoy viewing a healthy colony of isopods, such as these stunning Mariluna tricolors, I truly find fascinating. As they scurry about seemingly tirelessly, tending to their environment, they play a very critical role in the microfauna of a planet. And the keys to their success in captivity, besides understanding their basic needs, such as housing, humidity, soil composition, basic biology, proper diet is of critical importance to not only their living in captivity, but being able to thrive and reach their potential fecundity. Now I may have found one such food besides the leaf litter, the lichens, and the rotting wood products. Those are all products that we can access relatively easily. But to give them a good, stable, nutritional supplement, a good quality, solid, nutritionally based food source that meets the needs of all of them, be it a Cubaris, a Porcilio, such as these dairy cows, Mirilunella, or an Armadillidium, maybe even some of the cleanup crew, such as the dwarf variants. It works great for all of them. So today, I thought we'd take a peek at this amazing new food. Maybe it's not new on the market. I know it's been around for a while, but it's definitely new to me, and I'm truly in love with it. Let's take a peek. a variety of different types of food, different types of fish foods and different sorts of freeze dried minnows and stuff, all with varying degrees of success. I do admit that some species I'm probably a little heavy handed with the water and some of those foods tend to spoil rather quickly for me, causing mold issues and fungus gnat issues and stuff. So that is a, that's a cultural thing that I have to change for me. But overall, for my success, this new food that I found is very nutritionally sound. You know I like to bring the science in behind it. And looking through the ingredient panel of this thing, it meets all the needs of all these animals. It's truly an exceptional food. Will I stop feeding all the other things? No. Will I keep experimenting? Yes, I always will. But I am very, very pleased to have this new food in my arsenal. What food is it, you ask? Well, it's none other than isopod chow from my good friends Wally and Nanette Kern over at Supreme Gecko Supreme Isopod. Just look at the ingredient panel. Very, very well thought out food source. Meets all the nutritional needs. But, you know as well as I do, the proof is in the pudding. So, I had to take this new food and run it through the paces. And we got 30 plus cultures of isopods from a variety of genera. I can truly give them a test. And you guys know me, I don't do anything small. My last name's Biggs, Everything I'm going to do is going to be big. So, can't just try it on one isopod culture. Let's try it on all of them. So, we sat down, got all the cultures out on my Saturday morning maintenance, and everybody got to try the new all-natural isopod chow from Supreme Gecko. So, I did literally every culture. Each, to each culture, you know, big or small, got varying degrees of how much I'd put in there. But it didn't matter if it was Cubaris or my Porcilio Lavis orange. Now, generally more Porcilio species, most would claim that they require slightly higher protein levels. I, I'm, I tend to be on the side where I believe that most of us often overfeed. These are animals that basically are going to find things within their environment. Granted, we are their caretakers, so we are responsible for supplying those things within their environment. And this food meets the needs of all of them. Look at those beautiful bolivari. Truly one of my favorite species. Well, he'd probably even call them a king isopod. The beautiful and exceedingly prolific yellow zebras. This is that European cultivar I brought in of Armadillidium maculatum. It's a, it's a culture that actually requires a fair bit of work 
to maintain the integrity and the color, that vibrant yellow striping. More often than not, they tend to become more of a lime green. But everybody got it. I think you guys are kind of getting the idea how this is going here. I'm going to give everybody a little quick shot. I'm not going to show you all 30 of them. That would be silly. But we're going to go into the next phase shortly here where you'll actually get, come back in about an hour's time. Not you. You stay right there. We're not done yet. And let's take a peek at how it looked. Other than saying live mosses, forest mosses, and lichens and the such, pulled from freshly harvested from the, the, the forest floor, I have never fed any food to any of my species of isopods that all of them took to this readily. I'm not kidding. This was within an hour of me putting those teaspoons of food in each one of those cultures. It's almost as if none of them have ever seen food before in their life. And it didn't matter which the species or the genera. We saw the Priscilio lavis dairy cows, and now we have Armadillidium granulatum. Now granted, both of those species are exceedingly fast at replication. So yes, they have big appetites and they produce a lot of offspring. But it didn't matter. Every species I tried had the same reaction. The packaging reads that we are to feed it dry so that's what I did. There's no need for mixing it with water. They'll readily consume it dry, as you can see. At first I thought maybe I just gave them something like a play structure. It looked like a kid's sandbox in the bin. But you could see they're not playing. They are clearly eating it, and they're eating it with vigor. It's almost like it has something in it, something magical that the, the animals know. Maybe I gave them, a, maybe it's a treat. Maybe it's like a candy bar for a kid. Doesn't matter. These isopods absolutely love it. This scene, how can I not come back to thinking it reminds me, it's reminiscent of uh, Al Pacino portraying Tony Montana in Scarface. So what does Wally put in this magical food? Well, the ingredients list stabilize rice bran, cornmeal, dried seaweed meal, cane molasses, flour, brewer's dried yeast, bean flour, calcium carbonate, vitamins, green pea flour, ground flaxseed, spirulina, and cinnamon. And cinnamon is a natural antifungal agent. All right, Wally, you got my critters addicted. So, hope you guys will consider giving this food a try. It's definitely worked out for me. You can obtain the food through Wally's site, supremegecko.com. I'll drop a link in the description. Let me know your thoughts. Drop me a comment. And if you've used Wally's food as well, did it work the same for you? I'd like to know. I think the food's exceptional. So, as always, my friends, till next time. Take care.